Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my tips for how to treat your acne if you also have dry skin. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'd love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. So many of you are dealing with acne right now. Maybe it's hormonal, it gets worse with your period, and adult acne is no fun to cope with. It has to do with the oil being put out through the pore that then clogs the pore as well as kind of a delay and impairment of skin cell turnover within the pore. You have these sticky skin cells that clog the pore, then you get a blackhead or a whitehead, and then later on down the road you can get an inflamed cyst that's uncomfortable and painful. However, it's a misconception that if you have oily skin, then you must not need to use moisturizers. I've gotta tell you guys, oily skin does not equal moisturized skin. They are not the same thing. And in fact, many people with oily, acne-prone skin actually have dry skin too because they have an impaired moisture barrier. If you've watched any of my acne videos, you know I'm a huge fan of Hero Cosmetics Mighty Patch. I've recommended it in my video on how to stop picking your skin and my video on neck acne. And they are actually sponsoring today's video, so that's exciting because it means I have a discount code for you guys. If you click the link in my description box, you can get 15% off plus free shipping on orders over $35, which is a great deal. Think about your skin as a brick wall. The skin cells are the bricks, and then the ceramides, cholesterol, and lipids in between the skin cells, that's the mortar, the glue that keeps everything together. The integrity of this brick and mortar structure is really important because it keeps moisture in the skin. So the skin is firm, plump, hydrated, and also keeps irritating things out. When that integrity is compromised, maybe from using too many irritating products, maybe because you have a genetic tendency towards dry skin, or just age-related change, um, and loss of ceramides, what ends up happening is that you're more prone to irritation from things coming in contact with the skin. But that doesn't change the fact that you can still have oily skin because oiliness is governed by hormones. And so you're still dealing with the increased oil production that may flare around your period, for example, but you also have this barrier issue that you have to address. And with the oiliness, what ends up happening is that you can get plugging of the pores that leads to blackheads, whiteheads, and down the road from that is inflammatory, painful acne lesions. My number one tip is to just stick to a very simple skincare routine that includes cleanser, moisturizer, and sunscreen. It's super tempting, especially in the 30s and 40s years, to try all of these different products like toners and different serums. And while those can be helpful, if you're using too many things, it can cause a lot of irritation and that actually can compromise the integrity of your moisture barrier, leading to more dryness, more irritation, worsening the acne down the road because of increased irritation, you get more inflammation, which leads to more oil production, more clogging of the pores with sticky skin cells. I mean, it's just a downward spiral. So keep it very, very simple. Basic skincare routine should just include a cleanser, a moisturizer, and a sunscreen. Sunscreen is not something to skip, however, because uh, it's very important for the healing of the acne. Ultraviolet radiation from the sun impairs healing. So the skin barrier integrity is gonna be compromised and it also breaks down the oils on your skin leading to more inflammation and more flares of acne. So don't neglect the sunscreen piece of things and don't neglect the moisturizer piece of things either. That's gonna help your skin barrier and reduce the dryness. Number two, do not pick or manipulate your acne or your skin in any way. It's very tempting to pick at your skin. Um, I have a video all about skin picking disorder. Sometimes when people get stressed out, they're gonna start picking at their skin. And if you've got pimples, those are prime real estate for the fingers to go a squeezing. Unfortunately, when you manipulate your skin like that, it drives a lot of inflammation into the skin that ultimately will worsen the acne and it also puts you at risk for skin infections. It can be very challenging. I suggest doing things with your hands like you know, a craft project, sitting on your hands. I also strongly encourage you to check out the Mighty Patch. These are hydrocolloid patches that are fantastic to not only help with the healing of a pimple, but they serve as a barrier to prevent your fingers from accessing the pimple, ultimately helping with healing as well. How do these work? Well, they're medical grade hydrocolloid, which is something that we use in medicine for treating wounds. And what it does is it helps in absorbing the uh, inflammatory exudate that occurs when uh, pimples become inflamed. It helps 
absorb that so that the new healthy skin cells can come in and heal the pimple properly. When a pimple becomes inflamed, the inflammatory cells, they release different things, cytokines, and what ends up happening is everything that they release lends itself to the formation of a pustule, that white material that you may notice from an inflamed pimple. Hydrocolloid patches help extrude that white pus material. And that's really important because it stands in the way of the new skin cells coming in to heal the pimple more expeditiously. These patches are also really advantageous for those of you who have an impaired moisture barrier because really what they're gonna do is put the brakes on transepidermal water loss so that the skin surrounding the pimple doesn't become even more dry, irritated, and inflamed. It kind of almost acts like second skin. So I've tried out a lot of different pimple patches and why I continue to recommend the Mighty Patch is that it stays on and you can't tell it's on there. It's easy to put on, there's no wrinkling of the edges, you can't tell that you even have it on and honestly, you forget that you have it on. You wanna wear it for at least six hours to give it time for the hydrocolloid to wick up that exudate and so that's, you know, you can wear it during the day, for example, nobody's gonna know that you have this on. You can get them in a variety of different sizes and shapes too. This one that I have here, the Mighty Patch, the original, is a good size for a standard inflammatory pimple, but they also make them in rectangular shapes, which I happen to think are particularly good if you have kind of a clustering of cystic lesions along the jawline, that is the perfect uh, size and shape for those. You guys know I'm also a fan of their Rescue Balm. I've recommended this in several videos too. This is great to address the dry skin issue and it really helps once the pimple has healed over and the skin is intact, this is really helpful for expediting uh, healing of that hyperpigmentation or the post-acne redness that can occur. It's got panthenol, which is really good for improving the moisture content of the skin. It's also got beta-glucan, a wonderful humectant, and it's got some oligopeptides that may help in facilitating healing. These products are pretty affordable, especially in comparison to many of the other you know, exotic serums and whatnot that you may be tempted to try. Um, however, don't forget, check out the link in my description box because again, you can get 15% uh, off of orders $35 and over plus free shipping. When you're dealing with acne plus dry skin, the last thing you wanna do is go aggravating your moisture barrier further by picking and squeezing your skin. Uh, that's why I really love these products because they help not only improve healing, but they also create a barrier to wandering hands as I touch my face. <laughs> so yeah, highly encourage those. Those of you who have watched any of my videos, you know I discourage using uh, pore extractors or those awful pore vacuums. Uh, especially in the case where you have dry skin because those are gonna create a lot of irritation to the skin barrier, you're gonna lose more water out of the skin and they generate a lot of just inflammation that can lead to scarring. It's, those are not good to use. Uh, pore extractors, for example, there's something that we do actually use in dermatology, but it's not something you wanna just use by yourself willy-nilly on random acne lesions, because some are just not amenable and you can really cause a lot of scarring, not to mention uh, damage to your moisture barrier with more dryness and irritation. The pore vacuums are problematic because they don't actually suck out the contents of your pore and they can cause bruising. And as, they're, as you're putting that suction force on the skin, you're really just sucking more moisture out of your skin, leading to more dryness and irritation. So don't pick, squeeze, manipulate your skin whatsoever. Number three, you wanna make sure that you're not overdoing it with active ingredients for acne. Using too many all at once, introducing too many active ingredients, it's a lot for your moisture barrier to handle and it can lead to a lot of irritation. I always suggest introducing one active at a time. Uh, and by actives, I mean things like salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, or retinol. These are ingredients used to treat acne. However, they can be very drying, they can create some irritation, they exfoliate the skin, which in and of itself is going to cause more water loss out of the skin. So they take some time to get used to and for those side effects to subside. So the last thing you wanna do is go trying multiple ingredients all at once. You can really end up getting very dry, irritated, inflamed skin, uh, an irritant contact dermatitis that unfortunately ultimately will worsen the acne. So one active ingredient at a time. And the way to introduce one is to just start using it maybe a few days or nights a week 
uh, seeing how you tolerate it, and then increasing to daily uh, for a few weeks. And any active ingredient is gonna take time to work. Give it at least six weeks of just using that uh, before even entertaining the idea of introducing another ingredient. And again, if you get to a point where you do wanna introduce another ingredient, introduce it slowly. And I suggest using it at a different time of the day, like for example, using one active ingredient at nighttime, like retinol, and then the other active ingredient in the morning, like benzoyl peroxide. That way you minimize um, the contact together that can lead to so much irritation that causes problems for you. Or you can alternate one active ingredient one day, another active ingredient the next day. Not all active ingredients necessarily need to be used on a daily basis to benefit your acne. So you might introduce them again slowly and then try alternating uh, one day on, the next day off with, another, with a different ingredient. You have to moisturize. Get over the fear of moisturizing if you have oily skin and if you have acne. It's so important because what it does is it helps reduce water loss out of the skin and it helps clue your skin barrier into beginning to restore itself. It helps you tolerate these active ingredients that I mentioned, benzoyl peroxide, retinol, salicylic acid. It helps you tolerate those better, allowing them to work better, uh, allowing them to work faster so that you get clearance faster. And they also help in, uh, because, it, because moisturizers help reduce water loss out of the skin, they make it so that your acne uh, is less likely to heal with persistent redness or discoloration. Really a very important part of your skincare routine. Uh, again, as I said at the beginning, you wanna keep the routine consistent and simple. And skipping a moisturizer is something that can lead to a lot of dryness and irritation, especially if you have dry skin. Now, certain times of the year, you're gonna find that you really need maybe a heavier moisturizer. Don't fear those if you have acne or oily skin. Don't fear that they're gonna clog your pores or anything like that. Um, think of them as helping that moisture barrier. For example, in the winter time, when the heater comes on, uh, you're more likely to lose more water out of the skin or during uh, certain times of your cycle, your skin may be more sensitive and more prone to losing water. And that might be a time where you're seeing more flares of acne too. So don't, don't tiptoe around moisturizing in, a, in an effort to dry up the acne. Ingredients to look for in your moisturizer. I already mentioned panthenol is a wonderful one uh, for helping the moisture barrier. Um, also ceramides are a good ingredient. They kind of help clue the moisture barrier into recovering. You may choose moisturizers that have silicones in them to reduce water loss out of the skin. The silicones, they feel nice and lightweight. They're not greasy on the skin or heavy. And they also help, uh, they also, silicones like dimethicone, for example, in moisturizers, they're frequently in moisturizers that are labeled oil-free and they uh, actually allow for the evaporation of sweat. So they have an anti-shine property. So they're a nice option for people who have acne. Uh, you also might wanna choose a moisturizer that has niacinamide in it. Niacinamide is not only anti-inflammatory, it helps both oiliness and it helps the moisture barrier. So it's a great ingredient for people dealing with acne and dryness or both or either or, great ingredient. So check the description box. I'm gonna list down below some of my favorite cleansers, moisturizers, and sunscreens that are really good for people with both oily skin as well as dry skin. My final tip is when it comes to acne treatments, consider using them as spot treatments. Now you can't do that with all acne treatments, but some you can, and doing it just to the pimple, that's what I mean by a spot treatment, doing it just to the pimple reduces excessive dryness and irritation around other parts of your skin where you may not necessarily suffer from acne. Uh, salicylic acid can be used as a spot treatment as can benzoyl peroxide. And both of these ingredients notoriously are pretty drying and can be pretty irritating. And they work well as a spot treatment. The way to use them as a spot treatment is when you first feel the pimple coming, you, you know it, you can kind of feel it under the skin. That's when you wanna start spot treating, right then. And you wanna spot treat all the way through till when the pimple appears and you wanna spot treat for a week after it goes away. Continuing to spot treat will reduce the chances that it heals with 
hyperpigmentation or redness because you continue to get that anti-inflammatory effect on board. However, retinols or retinoids like adapalene or tretinoin, they don't work as spot treatments. So you can't just use those as needed because they take some time to kind of build up and start working and you really want them to the entire face. They provide a field effective control, plus they also have some other benefits to the skin like uh, improving skin cell turnover. So those ingredients unfortunately don't work as spot treatments, but things like benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid that can be super drying, they do work as spot treatments. And that is one way to incorporate those ingredients into your routine without getting too dry or irritated from them. All right guys, those are my five tips for treating acne when you've got dry skin. I hope this video was helpful to you all. And again, check the link in my description box to try out Mighty Patch, get a discount. They're fantastic. I've been recommending Hero Cosmetics in so many videos over the years. I'm really glad to be able to partner with them on today's video. And if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.